And I think we have this one going too, Amy? Uh, yes. Good job. Okay. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my first two guests today. And they are two of my favorite actors, performers in the uh, Asheville area. And they are Ellen Pappas, who's an actor, singer, director, playwright, educator also in your spare time. And we also have uh, Tasha Pepe, who is an actor and in your spare time a realtor. Mm -hmm. And mother, among other things. Yes. Okay. And what I admire about both you two women is you also bring your roller skates, you know, to, to how you get from one thing to another. Oh, I use a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. And they can't see it, but skateboard, Ellen's on a skateboard. It's attached. I have a cape. Okay, you have a cape, too. Yes. <laughs> because, really, I mean, how you folks do it, I don't know, you know, you... You're doing, about, what, about 17 things simultaneously? W would that be the case? We are women, hear us roar. <laughs> okay, you do. And, and you'll certainly get to hear these two women roar in a, a variety of capacities. And let's just jump right into the first one you, you're involved in. That's a play that starts this weekend. Is, is that correct? Yes, right. it starts Friday we open. Okay, and it's uh, one of my favorites. It's a uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum. And for the benefit of the folks who have never seen the movie or never seen the show, Kind of, Tasha, the Reader's Digest version of that show. It is about a Roman slave who wants to be free, so he pretty much does whatever he can, including um, matchmaking and all sorts of general silliness to get to that place. And what's your role in it? I play Philia. She is the young virgin courtesan. Okay. Is that typecasting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but fun role, fun show. And Ellen, your role in the show is what? I am Domina. I am the wife of Senex, and I am one mean woman. Okay. But uh, I think that was unfortunate. They should have flipped the role, so you could have been the, the young virgin. Is oh, that? absolutely. <laughs> Just one look at me, and you know that is, that is my role. But, <laughs> but Tasha sings it so beautifully. She just sings that role so beautifully that, you know, no contest. Well, it's a fun show, too, because it's not only it's a fun show, it's, it's a fun movie as well. Did you ever see the movie? Yes. Ellen, have you seen yes. the movie? I always wonder, when, when I meet performers, is that a good or a bad idea to see a, a movie or a show before you do it? How do you feel about that? Like, you saw it probably years ago. Have you seen it recently? I have not. Um, I think generally if you're going to watch someone else play a part, you should be watching lots of people play the part because you don't want to play it the same way they, they do. Because sometimes I imagine it's probably good to not see it in advance mm -hmm. and then you just come into it blind, you know. Because that's probably this movie because I saw it, I don't know, 20 years ago. I haven't seen it lately. But um, the movie itself, it's uh, the, the musical itself is pretty complex, right? It's not an easy show to perform, is that? Stephen oh. Sondheim wrote the music, and his music tends to be very complicated. While there are some numbers that are what I call very melodic and very pretty, uh, there are also numbers that are very, very complex. And, um, wow, it's great to see the people in the show deliver those songs. Well, we should also give a shout-out to our mutual friend uh, you have at this show, I think making a musical debut as musical director. You have... Uh, I don't know a title for it, but you have Trissa King. Trissa King is our music director, and um, she's whipping us into shape. She's she's getting us where we need to be, um, doing a great job. Okay. And you have a bunch of folks in the show. How many people are in the show? Fifteen. Uh, no, are there, no, there aren't. Are there fifteen? A bunch of people. Fifteen. Okay, a lot of people on, on stage, so it's going to be quite a show. You mentioned um, it's, it's fortunate we have, if it works, we have some of the... Um, the tracks from the show, and is, is that the opening number? The one I show here first is everybody what I have made. What, what number is that? No, that's um, that's one of the numbers that the the uh, men sing about um, philia. Um, the opening number is actually comedy tonight. Oh, okay, right. And um, it's a big ensemble number with big voices, so it's um, very entertaining. And the other one you said that uh, Tasha sings, everybody would have made. That's a good idea. I, I think this is something that, you know, <laughs> I, should, I should tell Cynthia this, you know. And, and wait, wait. It. We all have maids. They're called us. <laughs> <laughs> the men are singing that song about Philia because they believe that she's actually the maid, not who she actually is. Oh, so you're not the maid in this. I am not the maid. No. Okay. <laughs> since we mentioned it, let's see if we can get this going. It's going to be a technical experiment here. But thanks to... Um, Tasha and Ellen, they brought in, um, what is this, the, uh, sound, uh, uh, some of the track. 
Stop this. Fluttering up the stairway, shuttering up the windows, fluttering up the bedrooms, fluttering up the mattress, fluttering all around the house. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delicious? Tidying up the dishes, neat as a pin. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delightful? Sweeping out, sweeping in. Everybody ought to have a dance. And they do a little dance with this. Yeah, I think I can do it. I got it. Okay, we didn't mean to play the whole thing, but you got to hear the whole play thing. And Ellen, you mentioned something interesting. It was just kind of wa fun watching you... Um, as you're listening to music, but Ellen was also dancing at the same time, too. And the show, which is, like I said, not only is it kind of interesting music to it, but there's also dancing to it as well. Mm -hmm. And who's doing the choreography? Molly, what's her last name? I don't know. Okay. Molly and I did um, both choreographed it. By the way, that'd be a, a great name for a choreographer, wouldn't it? Molly, I don't know. You yes. know, or, or I, 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 I like, worked with her before. She's wonderful. But, but I love it, Tasha, too, you know, like restaurants, you know, you know, you know, you know that place or something like that. You know, you just right. Molly is the choreographer. Now, that oh, I, I give folks a lot of credit, too, who are actors, to not only do the singing and memorize the lines, but you also have to dance at the same time, too. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of dancing in this? There's a good bit of dancing. There's a good bit of dancing, and there's a lot of um, organized chaos is the way to put it. Organized chaos which is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And we would advise the audience to keep your eyes open, to just pay attention to who's going where and who's doing what. Now, age appropriate, who would you say this is geared to? Well, my kids will come. Okay. Um, but that may not be the choice <laughs> of every parent. Okay, yeah. but it could be uh, it could be appropriate for teenagers and, and children. Oh, absolutely. It, it's kind of a fun show. Because I'm, I'm going to show right now, and they use the F word 66 times. You well, know? there's definitely no swears in it, but the fact that Philia is a virgin and that she's being sold and that there's courtesans doing some fun dances okay. are in the show. So now talk a little bit about the fact that you folks have been working on this for quite a while, and I don't think people realize that. You know, They'll come to the show. It's this weekend. Next weekend is running three weekends. Mm -hmm. Okay, how February long? 14th through March 1st. How long have you been in rehearsal? Since around Christmas was our first mm -hmm. rehearsal. Okay. And people don't, I don't think, realize that. You know, they'll come see a show and say, hey, that's kind of cool. But you've been working on this for a couple months already. Mm -hmm. A month and a half at least. And some of us, we were given our material probably in mid-December, some of us. were given uh, musical scores and, and, and some idea of what we needed to gear up for. And then this week, I guess, is particularly crucial, or you're into Tech Week now this week and, and putting it together? Yes. Okay, and you think you would be ready on uh, on Friday? I think we're ready right now. We are, right now, to go. Okay, Boom. well, we need it with the rest of the guys and everybody at the rest of the cast, and then we could have done it right, right <laughs> here, here, here and there. So the show also, you said Sondheim, phenomenal music. How many songs are in the ballpark? Do you know? A bunch? Um, I would say 20. And you know what? It's funny. People tell me, some people tell me they don't like musicals. You know, I don't get it, you know, that they won't see a musical. But this is one they should see just because it's a fun show. And they're going to be prepared to laugh also. I, I, think, I think this is a show that um, really lifts the spirits. It really is a comedy. Um, I would say the genre has somewhat disappeared from, from current day stagings. But... Um, 
it's a riot. It really is. And we have such a phenomenal cast. Um, again, organized chaos can be, can be a lot of fun. And I think everyone will walk out of there feeling uplifted and smiling and definitely singing some of those songs. Not to slight anybody, and, and you don't have to remember the whole cast, but can you mention some of the people, if you know them off, off the top of your head, Tasha? Huh? Ellen? <laughs> well, uh, okay, we ha I don't know Brent's last name. Sh Schuler? Brent Schuler. He played Man of La Mancha when they did it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Bob Pompeo, um, Jonathan Forrester. Cody Perro. Mm -hmm. Mark Lieberman. Mark Lieberman. Mark mm -hmm. Lieberman. Of course, us, Tasha Peppy and Ellen Pappas. I mean, really, keep your eyes on us. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's a cast of, I would say, a cast of thousands, but it's a cast of 15. <laughs> and so. some of the names you mentioned are really funny guys, you know, yes. and, and gals, too. So it, it's, it's quite a cast. Also, we should give a shout-out to the director is... Jim Walker, the amazing, amazing Jim Walker. He's just pulled this together uh, beautifully. And to his credit, or hopefully it's not so, but this is going to be one of his last shows. I think he's directing. Is this his last show, perhaps? We hope not. I'm, okay. Uh, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. That's what, that's... I think he is taking a step back from directing as much as possible, especially musicals, because it's such a big job to direct a musical. And I know he had been behind the scenes in a lot of stuff at Hendersonville yes. Community Theater, too. So it's a shame, because he really, I mean... All the people there put a lot of time and effort into this, you know, to, um, and most of we should mention, too, uh, Tasha and Ellen, that for the most part, most of the, this is all on a volunteer basis. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Oh. C community theater. Uh, fabulous volunteers. We've got Don, who built the set. We've got um, Rob Reese, who also helped design the set. We've got uh, Sarah Hessinger. We've got Dawn. We've got uh, Pat. We've got Lynn. We've got so many people Kathleen. who are be Kathleen, who are be Kathleen, the customer, who yeah. are behind the scenes, who are working so hard and putting in so much energy to make this magic. And not only Ellen, as you said, people working behind the scenes, but also all the actors in the community theater. Um, I, I don't think I'm sharing anything I shouldn't, but they're not getting paid. Is that community theater actors don't get paid? Uh, if you're in community theater, if you want the title of a community theater, <laughs> you don't pay the actors. Um, everything changes when it becomes a paid job. I think this, this something special about this show is that, you know, I, I do a lot of professional theater, but there's so much passion at this theater, and everyone is working so hard despite not being paid, and a lot of people aren't singers, but they are, I mean, they've brought it, and Trissa has really brought it out of them, and it's been really beautiful. Well, it's funny you say that. Um, Tasha, because I, I actually kind of like at times, if not all the time, community theater better because of the passion, as you said, and they're not just going through the motions, you know, mm -hmm. but it's really exciting, and, and the level of talent, I think, in Western North Carolina is just incredible, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I think you'll see it in this show. Talk about a, a, another song, and we'll have to give a warning a, about what you'll hear when you listen to the song, but it's one of my favorites, and it's the song Lovely, and who sings that? Tasha oh, sings it. it with Cody. Okay, and this is kind of a love song? Would it you say? is. Uh, well, this is the song that Philia is explaining that she has only been taught to be beautiful and that she has no other skill, and then, yes, he responds that she is lovely. Oh, and so that's your other skill? <laughs> um, being lovely is her <laughs> only skill. And, and that's your professional skill as yes. well, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're a lovely realtor. You're a lovely whatever. Now, here, we'll just give a heads up just because I love the song, but in between, you might hear um, hear the words... Rehearsal tracks. Rehearsal it, tracks. This so, is very early in the rehearsal okay. period. But just if you can get beyond that, I just hope we can play the song because I just love it, and it's a lovely song. Um, let's see if we can... Thank you. 
don't need anything. You love me. Okay, we got to stop it, but I love that song. And I love it because that's Cody singing with you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I've ever seen him sing in a show, too, but very sweet voice. Isn't that a beautiful song? It's, it's, just, it's lovely. Really, it's <laughs> lovely, too. But I can just see this. We, we could change your whole name. That could be a professional name, you know. Tasha, lovely Peppy, or we just like, lovely Peppy, you know, uh, <laughs> on your business cards or something. And you work with the realty, work with a lovely realtor, you know, a lovely home. You know, <laughs> everything is lovely. Fun song, though, beautiful song, though. It's one, one of my favorites. And we won't give it, we won't do a spoil, spoil word as to what happens, because that, that's part of the, the whole show. But let me tell you a secret. Tasha doesn't know it yet, but every time they sing that song, those of us who are backstage start dancing together. Oh. We all oh, dance. Really? We all dance. We grab each other and we just dance to the song because it's so lovely. Yeah. But it really is, you know. Just I'm almost tearing up just listening to it. You know, just a very sweet song, um, great song to one of my favorites from the show. And then um, we have time for one more show, leads up into the finale. I mean, great finale, great uh, opening number as well. But talk a little bit, Ellen, about the um, finale. Well, the finale is. Um, after all this absolutely insane chaos, very organized chaos, but chaos, um, there comes, uh, I'm not going to be a, give it, be a spoiler and, and tell you exactly what happens, but I will tell you things resolve itself in a very, very humorous way. I would say in a very unusual way, but a very humorous way. And the entire cast comes out and um, they kick it. Boom. So there's a positive ending to this story? It's an, it, look, people will smile when they leave there? People will smile and laugh when they leave. You know, contrast that. I don't know if you folks saw it, the film when the Oscar um, Parasite. Did you see it yet? No. Did you see it? Um, uh, anyway, it's just um, the most violent ending, you know, I, I've ever seen. You know, I said, whoa, you, you won't see that here. Is that correct? No. Okay. No, I think the most violence is, is uh, what Domina does to to um, Hysterium. There is a funeral, though. Oh! oh, oh. Spoiler alert. There's a funeral. Okay. But hopefully it's not either of you two. We'll have to, we'll have to find see. out. Okay, great. And by the way, if people do want to come see it, we spend Hendersonville Community Theater, beautiful little community mm -hmm. theater, in downtown, sort of right off the, the right of downtown Hendersonville. Do you remember the, um, the um, website address? It's hendersonvilletheater.org. Okay, and we should mention theater spelled correctly. Is that correct? T H E A T R E. Right, which I, I call now. That's I correct. I would say that's correct. The correct theater. Spelling. Yeah, some people still spell it uh, E R. But again, next three weekends, people are in for a treat. And we should mention then, since Ellen talked a little bit about the finale, hopefully I'll be able to at least play part of it. But this is the finale. Great song, also comedy tonight.
people should remember, too, this is just the track very early in rehearsal. Yes. Is that correct? So when they see the show, they're going to see the finished production. It's going oh, to be yes. Great. All those songs we've come a very long way on. Is that it? Yes. Now, that's kind of interesting, too. Talk a little bit about Tasha and Ellen, about playing uh, with a track. You're using there, when you're playing against, and at the show itself, it's not the full-blown orchestra, but it's actually the track. What are you feeling about that? It's a lot more difficult than working with an orchestra because when you work with a musical director, you have time to breathe. You, They'll give you a little pause. They'll follow you. If you mess up on your words, they will help you get back on track. It's funny. My cha- my thing has changed on that because I, I used to say I only wanted to see you know, the, the, the music with the orchestra, but actually you're getting professional. It's, it's top-notch talent you're getting with the track. Plus, you can practice with it also mm-hmm. in advance of the show. So that, that makes it easier in some respects, though, yes. you, you get to practice with it. Yeah. I think Ellen and I just have to have had to learn to sing our songs without breathing. Right, is that it? Really? Oh. <laughs> There's just not much time for it allowed in the track. And it's Sondheim, and he doesn't believe in his singer's breathing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just spit out those lyrics. Talk a little bit in our remaining time about the fact that you folks are doing other things. And one of the things that, again, impresses me, not only the two of you, but with any actors I, I speak with, is that in addition to doing this show, inevitably you're sometimes doing other shows. I know certainly the case with Tasha, I saw her in a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks before she was in a musical review at the same time this was going on. Mm-hmm. And are you working on anything else also? The only other thing that I'm doing currently is the On Broadway at the Asheville Beauty Academy that we've well, talked about. Well, well, let's mention that again, too, just a fun thing. If any of our listeners want to do something a little bit different, every Sunday night you're doing this thing? Every Sunday night from 7 to 10 on Broadway at the Asheville Beauty Academy, we're doing a live cabaret-style karaoke. So we have Bob Strain, a live pianist, and people can bring music and sing their hearts out um, show tunes. And so it's just primarily show tunes? It's just show tunes, yes. Okay. But if they don't have their own music, Bob has a lot of music there's, as well? There's a big box full of books upon books. Okay. Are people starting to bring their own music? People are bringing their own music, yes. Okay. That must be fun, though, it's, isn't it? It's wonderful. Well, now, also talk a little bit about the fact that um, you mentioned, I love the name of the place, Asheville Beauty Academy. Mm-hmm. So I get my hair cut that day, too? I think the origin, the name came because before it was Tressa's, it oh, was the Asheville yeah. Beauty Academy, and I think they just used that name. Because when you think about it, it's one of the great names. It's just a fun name it is. You know, for, for a place, but no haircuts that night. No haircuts. Okay. But every Sunday night, 7 to 10, yes. at Asheville Beauty Academy, and you're with, um, it's you and Bob, and who else? Philippe Coquette. Okay, Philippe Coquette. And so they're in for a treat if they just see Philippe Coquette. Yeah, is, we, is do, going. we do also do... Um, group numbers so everyone in the whole built the whole room will all sing together what if you can't sing it's okay <laughs> well so you can get up to karaoke or not karaoke it's actually playing to live music right but if you don't that's okay mm-hmm. okay just have fun time there's a lot of people who come just to listen okay so is that a challenge for you um uh when you're doing a, a couple of different things at once you know like i, I just can't believe pe- folks can do that you know working in this show, then doing the musical review, then doing that. Is that that keeps you busy? It certainly does, yes. Have you ever done three at a time? I have. Actually, last summer I did about seven at once. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's, and, and you don't have a problem with it. Ellen's another one, too, one of my favorite performers in the area. And uh, she also is not only doing a funny thing happened on the way the form, but last I counted, Ellen, yeah, but six other projects kind of in the works and doing them simultaneously? Um, I do. <laughs> um, the weekend after uh, this show closes, we're going to be up at Arts in the Abbey up in Burnsville doing Songs of Peace and Love. Then we're, Tasha's working with me on Happy Birthday to You Dinner Theater in um, Hendersonville. Are you doing that one, too? Yes, she is. And then I am... Casting and directing Tasha in Happy Together Across the Pond at Attic Salt at the end of April. And that's as far as I'm going because I've got stuff after that. We could talk about that some other time. But, yeah, there's there's three or four projects in the work right, works right now. And I'm happy to say that um, Tasha's in all of them with me. Now, how do you do that? Keep, keep them from running into each other. <laughs> it's it's just a matter of um, when you have, excuse me, I do have a bit of a sore throat. When you do have um, some time to sit, you pull out your binder, 
with this show and you go through everything here. Then you pull out the binder from that one with everything in it. And you just learn to uh, carve out the time for each project. And, of course, your deadline is the one you're in first. One of the things you've started doing, too, uh, to your credit, over the last couple of years, or especially the last year, you also started directing. In other words, originally I knew you as a performer. I mm -hmm. loved seeing you perform. But now, now you're going beyond that. You're not only directing, you're actually producing shows as well. Do you have a favorite thing to do? In other words, is it performing, directing, putting the show together? I love all of it. I love all of it. I just love theater. I've always loved theater. I did a lot of theater in New York, so it's really nice to come to a place like Asheville where there's so much talent, oh my goodness, everywhere you look, and opportunities to do so many different things. It's, it's wonderful. And one of the things you, you've done also over the last year or so, you certainly brought a lot of people together in a lot of different projects. You know, uh, That's because I, I like to say I'm very quiet and shy <laughs> and introverted, and I don't make friends easily. So, yeah. No, I love to bring people together. I, I, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm like a salon on the move. You know, you just grab this person, that person, this person, that person, and say, how would you like to do that? How would you like to do that? That person needs somebody. You could go here. You could go there. I just like to do that. It, it works. That's a great analogy. It reminds me of a similar analogy uh, Jeff Messer uses. And Jeff does also about 10 different projects at once. But he's, he sees himself as a um, cooking and he has a burner, and he has nine. He has ten burners. Nine are at one, going at one time, and the tenth is always available for something else. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like you that that wherever you're doing, you also find time and effort to get something else going too. Or it might be down the road a couple months, but yeah. you'll find time. Tasha, back to you. Um, I've seen you, I guess, in a lot of stuff you, you've done locally. I'll definitely have to get to Asheville Beauty Academy. I'm trying to think. I've seen you in a lot of musical stuff. You also, I'm trying to think, have I seen you as an actor, as a straight dramatic role? The most recently you've seen me was in It Didn't Happen with Judy Calbrice. Okay, Judy's going to be a guest later this morning, but that was kind of an unusual play too, but you didn't sing in that one. I did not, I no. What, what was that about? Um, that was about Judy's experience um, discovering her sexuality and her experience with women in her life. Do you have a preference, drama or... Uh, music. I really love to sing. I like it better if I can do both at once. Um, but I, I really enjoy doing straight theater as well. Okay. Now, the, anyway, um, I'd like to thank both uh, Ellen and Tasha for being my guests this first half hour on the Blaine's World Show. Just to recap one more time, Ellen, the show is going to be when and where? It opens February 14th and runs through March 1st. And the address to get the tickets online is? HendersonvilleTheater.org. And definitely, it's a show you want to see. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I thank you for being my guest this first half hour. And if I can get there, I'm going to see it. Wonderful. Okay, thanks, thank guys. Thank you, Blaine. Okay, speak to you soon. Bye. And as Ellen and Tasha work their way out, I'd like to mention the support for this show and WPVM is unwritten by Grail Movie House, Asheville's alternative cinema. Ellen, let me grab you, give you this, the uh, flash drive, if I can get it out. And uh, there we go. And uh, the Grail Movie House is an independent, locally owned three screen cinema located in downtown Asheville. For current features, visit the Grail website, grailmoviehouse.com. And um, the, uh, this is grailmoviehouse.com or the Grail social media pages. I'd next like to recommend recognize some of the upcoming shows in the Asheville area. And uh, a lot of good stuff, as Ellen and Natasha mentioned. The first is um, a show. Uh, at Hot Theater, good show if you get to see Gruesome Playground Injuries, starring um, Candace Dickinson and Alan Chandler, directed with great ingenuity by newcomer to Hot, Doug Sabat. And uh, that'll be February 14th and 15th this weekend. Tickets at hottheater.org. In addition, a guest last week talked about an exciting uh, opportunity for folks, and that you can participate in the Citizens Fire Academy, sponsored by the Asheville Fire Department. It's an amazing opportunity. It's going to run from on Tuesday nights from March 24th through May 19th. And if you're interested in that, you can get uh, information at asheville.seamlessdocs.com slash F slash forget it. Go to the Asheville Fire Department. You'll find information <laughs> about that. I don't know if they'll find it at, at Stephanie's, your, um, your website. We'll talk about that in a second. At any rate, 
as we um, welcome our second guest into the uh, show today, she is um, Stephanie Brown, and she's president and CEO of Explore Asheville Convention and Visitors Bureau. And uh, Stephanie, you can wave to all your fans and friends on Facebook, okay? And uh, as you mentioned that as president and CEO of the Explore Asheville Convention and Visitors Bureau, Stephanie leads a staff of 27 full-time professionals to attract overnight visitors to Buncombe County and manage an operating budget of $19.5 million. Prior to joining Explore Asheville in 2012, she served as president and CEO of the Alexandra, Alexandria Virginia Convention and Visitors Bureau. She's a native of Ohio. She directed marketing and public affairs for Mount Vernon, the home of George Washington. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie, the question I always ask, um, you grew up where, in Ohio? I grew up in Ohio in a small town in northeast Ohio. Okay. And did you know when you were growing up in Ohio, a small town in Ohio, you always wanted to head a convention and visitors bureau? Oh, I didn't know <laughs> a thing called a convention and visitors bureau existed. You know, I grew up in a town that didn't have tourism at all. Uh, I grew up in a family that didn't go anywhere or travel. And so, uh, you know, I've been become really passionate about, you know, what travel affords for people and the benefits to communities by bringing outside dollars in by, you know, for people to spend their money here. What, what got you into it? Oh, gosh, um, I went to graduate school for sociology, and I was working in a bookstore cafe, and um, a customer invited me to a apply for a job at the Ohio Tourism Office. And so I became, eventually became the director of uh, research for the Ohio Tourism Office. I married the director of research for the Virginia Tourism Office. And that led me to a position with Colonial Williamsburg um, that I loved very much. Um, and I headed their um, marketing program and their customer research program. And then we moved to Northern Virginia and um, I had the privilege of working at the home of George Washington as the Vice President of Public Affairs. And then I was invited to apply for the uh, position at the Alexandria Convention and Visitors Association when um, the leader there retired. And then five years later, I got a phone call out of the blue asking me to come to Asheville and interview for the position here. Now, the amazing thing about, I think, what you do, and, and uh, to your credit, is how Asheville has certainly changed over the last couple of years. In other words, just to date it a little bit, and you may be able to relate to this as well, when I first moved here some 10 years ago, a lot of people didn't even hear of Asheville. Right. You know, I'd have explained to them, I don't know if you know, Asheville's claim to fame, they had one claim to fame, do you know it? No, what was that? It was, um, I don't know if you've heard this, it was the most misspelled oh. city, have you ever heard that before? No. Of any city, this was like oh. 10 years ago, that people didn't know how to spell Asheville. And I have explained to it, it's not Nashville, it's Asheville. Yet, within 10 years, certainly and since 2012, that's changed just a little bit, would you say? Well, it's changed <laughs> a lot. And, you know, and it doesn't happen by accident. You know, it really is the result of more than 30 years of focused promotion and media relations attention. You know, the, we uh, place about 800 significant stories a year that, you know, they don't promote Explore Asheville. They promote the local businesses in Asheville and generate, you know, reputation and awareness for our community that also helps to attract businesses, um, you know, and, and really benefits us in so many different ways. So, you know, I, uh, I like to think that someday people will start to spell Nashville with an E in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and get back at them. Right. But, but what's so cool, Stephanie, is when I get emails from friends and, and notes, do you see Asheville was in the paper? You know, right. and I'm telling you, all over... I get at least one a week, and that's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, you know, the, there's um, there's a real uh, professional expertise to generating that kind of coverage. And, you know, we have a media relations team, you know, that is uh, really diligent about, you know, step one, you know, knowing the ins and outs of hundreds and hundreds of local businesses and their stories and what make them special. And then they do a lot of research to understand, you know, <clears throat> what journalists are interested in and what they're writing, and then... Hun literally, I think last year they did 450 customized pitches, um, and then we host journalists, and you know we showcase the city and help them understand local stories, and um, and then you know work with them to craft their stories and literally iterate that hundreds and hundreds of times every year. So you mean it just doesn't happen? It right? just doesn't happen <laughs> by magic, and you know you don't see this happening for you know Roanoke and other you know places that have spectacular mountain beauty and arts and culture and a great food scene too. It's, you know, it's the result of, uh, you know, a, a focused investment. And as you say, talk about the focused aspect of it, 
it almost must, must be tough to choose. There are so many possibilities to choose from, and it seems you hit all of them. You know, it's uh, the, one week could be the food, one week could be the music, one week it'll yeah. be something else. Asheville is not a one-trick pony. You know, yeah. what's really magical about Asheville is the combination of people um, who create this wide variety of experiences that we can share with people who come to to our community. And, and that is more complicated than being only Music City or only Barbecue City. And um, that's, you know, really probably one of the most challenging parts of promoting Asheville is not, not really only communicating all of the things there are to do here, but it's really about communicating the way you feel when you're here. And that's why, you know, we're focusing um, our promotion right now on a new tagline, um, Let Your Spirit Run Free. Which covers, I think, a lot of stuff, which is really cool. But even as you said, I think Asheville, in large part to your credit and your office's credit, has changed from just being the beer capital of the world. You know, for, for a while, that's all people knew Asheville was. But it's a lot more than just beer, which I think is really important. I think what's really great is, like, the ecosystem where, you know, we can attract people to spend their money with local businesses, and then that creates a platform that helps more local businesses enter the marketplace and to uh, thrive and survive. It lowers the barrier to entry by creating a source of customers. And then, you know, we provide free marketing platforms and resources to connect these local businesses. More than um, 1,200 local businesses are listed for free on exploreashville.com. And, you know, we invest in advertising that drives interest in that website and then, you know, use it, that and other, you know, marketing tools to connect them to these people who, you know, they're, they're starting a, a business that they always dreamed about, whether it's a literary tour or a wellness tour or a rooftop bar tour or an outfitter or a recreational business or an entertainment business, you know, on and on. And we provide them with the source of customers through the people who are attracted to visit. Well, you know, in terms of attracting the visit, even before we moved here, we came to Asheville a couple of times, as most people do. And I remember my concern was my, my wife plugged into the computer, um, holistic, new age, and spiritual. That's what she was mm. interested. She still is. I'm worried. I want to come here. and There's going to be nothing for me, you know. And immediately that changed because I saw there was so much Asheville. Like I'm into theater, you know, there's mm -hmm. so much theater. But there's so much jazz. You name it, you're going to find it in Asheville. Well, and now as a person who lives here, you know, all of those experiences are supported in part by a large population of visitors, but we get to enjoy them, you know, as residents and really have access to, you know, so much more theater and entertainment and food options and, you know, on and on culinary craft and um, artistry that, you know, we typically wouldn't be able to enjoy in a community with a population the size of Asheville. And your point's well taken in that we're hosting my um, sister and brother-in-law this weekend. We worried that they were here a couple of years ago, you know, what are we going to do? And we have a whole different itinerary, completely different than they saw, you know, three years ago. So that's kind of fun. That, you know, they it's, might it's, stay it's, longer than you're expecting. Right. Don't mention <laughs> <laughs> Unless you can host them or, or no, we didn't say that. But at any rate, uh, talk a little bit about then um, your office, Explore Asheville Convention and Visitors Bureau, there's also the uh, Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority. Mm -hmm. They're different. Is that correct? Uh, right. The law that created the occupancy tax also establishes um, the Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority as the public body that administers the proceeds of the tax. Um, the Explore Asheville is another name for the Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority. And commonly, the staff who are employed to do the work are referred to as Explore Asheville. And the board is referred to as the BCTDA. Uh, I think it's important to understand that, you know, that they are a public body um, with the public purpose of benefiting the community by creating economic vitality through attracting overnight visitors to Asheville. And so you mentioned that the funding of this, explain how that's taken care of. Well, you know, prior to 1983, there were no hotel taxes um, in the state of North Carolina. And still today, there are almost no meals taxes. Um, and my early predecessor, a man named Dick Trammell, um, had the idea, you know, seeing other communities have access to these sources of revenue for marketing. Um, you know, he promoted the idea of establishing an occupancy tax that would be overseen by the people who were being taxed. Um, in, in that case, hotels. Now it's hotels and bed and breakfasts and short-term rentals and vacation rental properties. 
Um, and so that created a source of revenue to be used for marketing. And it's changed over the years. In 2001, the tax was increased and the Tourism Product Development Fund was established and since then um, has awarded $44 million to 39 community projects. Um, the newest one will open on Friday at the LEAF Global Arts Center, um, which is an exciting new aspect to the block, the historic African-American neighborhood um, in downtown Asheville. Um, you know, so it's changed and uh, responded over the years, but it's also created, you know, a, um, this focused source of investment that has built a reputation for Asheville and has brought, you know, now $2 billion a year of spending from people who visit into the local cash registers of, you know, businesses that we love. Now, talk about the project. You just mentioned one of them. But, you know, I'm always very excited each year when I see the, the, the announce the new projects. And that's pretty exciting stuff because it helps get some of these new things off the ground, you know, or, or that need a push. Mention some of the other ones, if you would, Stephanie. You know, there are 39 in total. And actually, you know, just in downtown Asheville, there are 14 cultural projects, including the Art Museum, Pack Square Park, um, the Asheville Community Theater, um, the Leaf Global Arts Center. Um, we've done um, a series of um, uh, grants to preserve and protect and promote African-American history with a grant to the YMI and the Stevens Lee Museum and the African-American Heritage Trail. Um, we have funded a lot of sports facilities, including the John B. Lewis soccer fields, the Bob Lewis baseball fields, um, greenways. Um, also importantly, and you know, often not really understood, we funded infrastructure. Uh, more than $7 million for roadway, greenway, sidewalks, stormwater, um, public art improvements in the River Arts District. And, you know, we've been working with the city for a number of years to be able to um, invest that same kind of infrastructure um, enhancements for downtown Asheville. And what's cool about, I think, just about everything you mentioned, it's still in existence, you know, that... I mean, that really is amazing when you think about it. And there are things that are enjoyed by the people who live here as as well as being an economic development tool to attract people to the community. And when you talk about it, too, the nice thing also, if I hear you correctly, this is being funded primarily through this occupancy tax? Well, you know, that's money that's paid for by people who don't live here. Exactly. You know, it's all generated by visitors. It's collected um, by lodging properties. Um, when people pay occupancy tax, they are also paying sales tax. And, uh, you know, so that money is being used by state and local governments. Um, you know, and the money that we collect from visitors and invest in marketing, you know, every dollar that's spent on paid advertising generates $43 of spending in local cash registers and $3 of sales tax in only six months. I'm glad you mentioned that figure because I, I tell that to my small business clients with SCORE and, and elsewhere, that if you spend money on advertising, you should get some results, you know. And what really bothers me, Stephanie, when I ask somebody they spent money on advertising, they get results. They don't know, mm -hmm. you know. And how can you not know or you shouldn't spend it on it? Well, and this is a shared source of marketing. You know, this is marketing that, you know, is collected from visitors, is reinvested, and, you know, it creates a source of customers that, you know, really any tourism-related business can plug into you know, at no cost to them. Do you ever get resistance from hotels or other people that you're collecting the tax from? No. You know, I think that, you know, people who are in the industry really appreciate that um, it's a successful economic development tool. And um, I think one thing that's not largely understood is, you know, of every dollar of visitor spending that's attracted, you know, less than a quarter of it goes to a lodging property. Um, and only 50% of that goes to a hotel. Um, so the economic benefits, you know, are, are really spread to many different kinds of, of businesses. Talk about, though, some, something controversial, perhaps, is the idea, though, that they bring in money to Asheville, but some people say we have too many hotels in Asheville. You know, I, I think you've heard that before, where you right. just look. What's your thinking on that? Well, you know, that's we're not a regulatory, you know, agency. Those are decisions that are made through zoning. Um, you know, by elected officials based on the input that they get from the community. Um, you know, you could decide that there are too many bakeries or too many breweries or ne too, too many, many anything. Bakeries. Right. And so, um, you know, I think that um, the city is, you know, taking a wise approach to, you know, become better equipped 
to make those decisions and that the hotel moratorium, I think, will result in uh, more clarity and more transparency and, you know, will signal to the development community, you know, what Asheville wants. And the reality is that even though people may say there are a lot of hotels, each time it's bringing in more theoretical money, not only, as you said, just the hotel, but all this other... Yeah. Well, you know, hotels share their customers with everybody else. And, um, you know, I think the Urban Land Institute study that was released last week or the week before, um, you know, they emphasize that from a traffic um, perspective, hotels are at low impact. They're high generation of property taxes. You know, I mean, we don't um, we don't deny that, you know, there are problems associated with tourism that need to be managed. Um, you know, we need to find urban planning strategies that spread people around. We think that occupancy tax can appropriately be applied to infrastructure um, that, you know, enhances Asheville as a place to visit, but more importantly, maintains Asheville as a place that people love to live. Um, and so, you know, we're, um, we've invested in a tourism management and investment plan project um, that started last April. Um, and, you know, the intent is to work collaboratively with the city and the county to identify investments that can be made that help to manage tourism for the benefit of the people who live here and, you know, take a long-term view and to be able to plan for some monumental investments that might, um, you know, be a commitment for 10 or more years. Well, even there's a, I guess, a related kind of problem has to do with parking in downtown Asheville. Mm -hmm. You know, Asheville is great, but times parking can be challenging. Oh, I think this is a great time to uh, promote the use of the parking app, well, which people can easily that, right? understand um, and find, uh, you know, capacity for parking. We have a website that's geared for um, people who are visiting called welcome to avl.com. You know, it's a great resource for finding things to do, but it also has a convenient link um, to the city's uh, parking website. And so you can easily pop on and see which garages have, you know, capacity before uh, you leave the comfort of home. It's but, probably, probably you know, when, a good idea. When, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I encourage people to, you know, take ride sharing, you know, to visit their, you know, favorite venue and their favorite restaurant. My husband and I do that from our home all the time. But do ride sharing? Mm -hmm. Because I'm starting to do that a little bit. You know, people don't realize yeah. it. You don't have to deal with parking. You don't have to deal with anything. And it's a great way to get downtown. Yeah. And Asheville is such a walkable city. You know, we really love to be dropped off at a concert and then, you know, be able to walk around and not worry about, like, where our car is or how we're getting back to it and just, you know, call for a ride where we, where we end up. As you said, another advantage to Asheville being walkable, that as I tell people, everything's within 20 minutes. You know, you mm -hmm. go from one part of town. It's just incredible. You can get to every part of town. Yeah, we, uh, you know, um, I really enjoy in the um, spring and summer, you know, the rooftop bars at many of our hotels, and I can walk from my office, which is, you know, near the Bowcatcher Tunnel, to the Hyatt Place in 20 minutes. So really from literally one side of downtown to the other. Point well taken. We're going to, like, Hemingway's, you know, mm -hmm. and the only problem is we won't be able to sit outside, I, I think, this weekend. You know, it might, might be a little cold, but it's a beautiful venue to do that, you know. Right. I mean, we've in the last uh, in the last few years, you know, we really have had so much more access to these beautiful mountain views from downtown. You know, through the creation of some of these great venues. The um, when you're talking about the views, also, I guess that makes your job somewhat easier in the sense that if you come to Asheville, you're in for quite a beautiful view too. You know, it's not just a downtown environment, but you're going to see mountains. And you know, it's really kind of unique that, you know, our destination, you know, our community uh, has, you know, all of the amenities of a city for visitors, but also in such close proximity to amazing, you know, recreational and environmental um, experiences where, you know, you can connect with the outdoors and, you know, have these incredible um, experiences in nature and in the very same day, you know, be enjoying a pretty amazing meal and uh, entertainment. And, uh, you know, I, that's, that's not completely unique, but it's, you know, not, um, it's definitely out of the ordinary. We're also 20 minutes to the airport, even though I now say 25 minutes to the airport. You know, it's <laughs> changed a little bit, but it's just the nature of it. Another thing you'll see in Asheville, too, I think you will see some unique things, and I'll, I'll I'll ask you to talk about some of them, but you'll see some stuff in Asheville you won't see anywhere else. I think of um, 
uh, one thing we had, had a party a couple of years ago, the Pinball Museum. Mm-hmm. You know, who would think there's a Pinball Museum yeah. in Asheville, North Carolina? Yeah. Fun place. Well, you know, and what I think what really makes the connection to these places so special is, you know, they're created by people who live here. You know, and I think when, you know, you're experiencing these places that, you know, people think of as an attraction, you know, you're really experiencing something that's an expression of a person who lives in Asheville. You know, it's the realization of a dream that they had to create something and to, and to share that something with other people. Um, And, you know, a lot of places aren't like that. You know, a lot of places, the, uh, the experiences are, you know, created by a corporation and replicated from place to place. Um, and so, you know, when, when you're in Asheville, whether, you know, you're, you live here or you're visiting here, you know, it's, you're connecting on a human level. Well, then also I know we've, we've had parties at Well Played Games or what, what yeah. is that the name of it? Well Played? Yeah, Well Played Board Game Cafe. Right down the street. Mm-hmm. But an unusual experience, you know, who would yeah, think? It's you don't, unique. Yeah, you don't need your computers. You don't need your phones. You can play an actual board game people, and people play it. Yes, and a pretty amazing grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> great, great place to do. Talk about Stephanie, just off the top of your head, some of the the other amazing things people can experience when they explore Asheville. Oh gosh, it's so endless and in so many different categories. You know, right now, um, wellness tours are really booming, and um, you know, we have a couple of local companies that are leading yoga tours and meditation tours and, you know, taking people out into the mountains for these guided experiences. Um, You know, foraging tours have been really popular for a long time. Alan Muscat, you know, developed No Place Like Home that has received, you know, really national attention and is a really unusual experience for people. Um, It's really pleasing that we're seeing outdoor recreation, you know, grow and thrive through, you know, the proliferation of these small entrepreneurial companies who are offering, you know, outfitting from, you know, whether it's a river experience or um, an electric bike guided tour, you know, helping people to get out into, you know, nature in a way that's accessible to them. Um, You know, I think most of our visitors are not going to be able to cycle the Blue Ridge Parkway as aspirational as, you know, that is for, for many of us. Um, you know, but these companies are kind of responding to the opportunity of a customer base, you know, by being able to offer these really diverse and unique experiences. I loved what I saw on WLOS the other day about uh, another of our treasures in Asheville, Lazum Tours. Mm-hmm. And I loved, I don't know if you saw it, that what they're doing an anti Valentine's Day thing. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> that sounds like their level of creativity. It, 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 anyway, what they did, so it's Lazum Bus Tours is something. It's, yeah. it's that it's unique. To be loved. To, is that unique to Asheville, would you say? Uh, well, I mean, it's definitely Asheville homegrown. And I can't say there are no other comedy bus tours, but I definitely would say ours is the best. Right. With pur- <laughs> so. purple buses, you know, and and yeah. and, and bic- nuns on bicycles, yeah. you know, you'll see a little bit of everything. But, you know, that, that nun on a bicycle or, you know, that performer on the bus, you know, those are entertainers, you know, who are making their living. They're, they're able to apply their craft in this unique way that plugs into the visitor economy, you know, and sustains them as, you know, local people being able to work. And I think one of the big accomplishments of tourism here is that it's become year round, you know, and we're not seeing businesses close in the winter and, you know, service people being laid off and entertainers being laid off. You know, we're really seeing such a more sustainable year round tourism economy these days. And back to the Zoom, what they're doing on Friday is they're taking people, they're going to have a band on the bus, which they do from time to time. They're going to tell, take people to the axe throwing um, activity. Oh, that's awesome. I haven't been, have you been there yet? No, I haven't. I done. want to, but can you imagine that you can throw axes if you're in Asheville? And so, and so the idea, it's supposedly an anti Valentine's Day. If you want to get back at your ex or something, throw an axe <laughs> at the person. It's not that's a fun a wonderf- th- It's a great idea. A fun thing to do. What's your favorite part of your job? You know, my favorite part is the um, being able to support so many local entrepreneurs. And, you know, in 2018, we onboarded 115 new tourism partners and, you know, are able to connect them to a source of economic vitality. And, you know, these are great people. They're in the service industry. You know, they've created a business or they're working in a business that is created to make people happy and make them feel good and give them, you know, great uh, memories. And, 
So I think we're really fortunate because, you know, we're sales and marketing people and what we sell is a life enriching experience. And the beneficiaries of our work are the people who live in the community who are able to enjoy a source of jobs and business revenue and tax revenue. That's exciting, too, because as, as you indicated, you bring in people who, for the most part, aren't residents of Asheville, even though as a resident, I check Explore. Is that okay if I check Asheville, ExploreAsheville.com? We'd love for you to check Explore Asheville. And also there's you know the pared-down version that's really built for your phone, Welcome to AVL.com. Okay. And these are available through the website? Yep. Those are two different websites. Um, ExploreAsheville.com has a lot of inspirational editorial um, content. And then, you know, we kind of strip that away to make it really easy for you to find a restaurant, a brewery, an activity, and a hiking guide um, and parking on Welcome to AVL.com. Good advice. What's the biggest challenge you face? Well, you know, I mean, Asheville's experiencing, you know, growing pains. And, um, you know, the community, you know, can feel that there are just more people here and that's creating pressure on infrastructure and city budgets and, you know, any number of different things. And, you know, so we're in a, a period of transition of coming together as a community to figure out how to address those growing needs and, you know, how to change the models in a way that, you know, helps to kind of harness the benefits of tourism while also addressing the challenges. If a new business comes to Asheville, I guess you folks are one of the first places they should contact? Yeah, definitely. If they are a tourism-related business, you know, and are interested in the visitor economy, um, we have a website that's built just for the community called AshevilleCVB.com, and we do a CVB 101 orientation every month that helps people um, build a listing and a whole page on our website and learn how to interact with our sales and PR teams. And um, so we invite people to check it out, even if they're just interested in coming to a board meeting or seeing performance metrics or downloading the marketing plan. It's all posted on AshevilleCVB.com. And where are those meetings held? Uh, they're held in, in our office, um, which is uh, right before the Bowcatcher Tunnel, 27 College Place. Um, but the list of meetings with the dates and places and agendas. And we post all of our board materials. Um, anything that's handed out to the board is posted there, too. Listening to you, Stephanie, has me thinking that, boy, is this ever a job for you? You know, this was the, the job that was created for you. And I'll just give you kind of a, I don't know if it's a warning, but they better not leave Asheville. You know? <laughs> oh, that's very kind <laughs> because of you. Because I'm hearing this record, you know, every five years or something, you know, somebody's going to grab you. So... <laughs> Hopefully you're going to stay here for a while. Well, it's been my privilege and a real honor to be able to represent this community and uh, you know, to work with the, the people who live here. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for being my guest the second half hour on the Plainsville Show, Stephanie Brown. I'd also like to thank my um, first two guests, Ellen Pappas and Tasha Pepe, for being on the Plainsville Show. I invite you to listen in next week, same time, same place. We'll be on WPBM-FM, and we'll also be on Facebook. See you then. Asheville. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie.